everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right there is Nikki Kinzer. Welcome back. Welcome back, Pete. Welcome back, everyone. How's... Well, they're probably not. No. Yeah, they... they're, they've are they been just doing their own thing. They've been doing their thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how have you been? I've been doing great. I've yeah? had a great summer. Have, have you? you? Oh, yeah. I, I, it's been fantastic. We traveled. We, uh, you know, we've relaxed. We got a dog. Yay. Yay. Yeah, no, it's there's uh, there, there's a whole lot of positive stuff. Uh, y- you know, the the uh, health changes are going well. Awesome. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I I have I have uh, apart from the fact that my cat does not yet understand my dog, I have no complaints. And I have to tell you, you know, because we have a dog and a cat, I don't know yes. if they're ever really going to understand each other. So. But but you but can they leave them in the same room together. Like they're not going to attack one another. Well, <laughs> I'm pretty much. <laughs> My cat's bodyguard because she's really old. She's she's seventeen. Yeah. Eight, no, actually, she is nineteen years old. That is an old cat. It is. So I'm her bodyguard, and we actually don't have them in the same area just because our dog is is uh, he's five, and so he wants to play with her. And, and yeah. I mean, she's she's a little old lady. Like you yeah. got to be careful with her. So we do separate them, but it's because of the age difference. Now your your age difference between your cat and dog are a little bit closer. Well, though, yeah, we they? have so our cat is a is a mostly Maine Coon, so it's a it's a pretty big cat, and she's five, and our dog is seven months, and it's a terrier mix. But given where he is and where she is, they're about the same size, <laughs> and so there's there's no like size differential to to worry about. It's not like I mean they it, it would be a fair match. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> least, yeah. But, They'll but get also, along just fine. I hope so. She's she's finally, you know, my, my son has a bunk bed, so she's been sleeping up on the bunk bed for like the last 36 hours or 20, yes. 24 hours uh, not coming down. I, I just came down. The dog's on a walk, and she was eating. And so at least I, I know that she's not afraid to leave the room. Like, she'll, right. take, she'll take care of business. Uh, has she, know. like, hissed at him yet? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, that happened. Uh, gave him a flea bath yesterday, and she was on the other side of the door, uh, the bathroom door, like staring at him. I took this picture of her, like nose under the door. Uh, which, <laughs> What's going on yeah, in there? You could really tell there's something she is not keen on, and she she did hit, and she's not a hisser either. So this was this was fun. So oh, yeah. uh, it, anyway, enough animal talk. Um, we are talking about transitions. Speaking of transitions, we've been on a break this month, and we are uh, very excited to be back. We are, I don't know about you, but I feel really good about talking ADHD. Uh, after a nice little break. Yes, yes, absolutely. And we have some great things coming up um, too. Some great guests are coming on our show. And so it was it was a nice time to kind of reflect, look at these uh, surveys that I got back from people, what they want uh, us to talk about, what they want to learn more about. And uh, so, yes, it's been it's been great. Before we before we get started, uh, you know the drill, everybody. Head over to TakeControlADHD.com. Uh, and if you don't know us, you can get to know us there a little bit better. You can listen to the show for free right on the website and subscribe to the mailing list, which is really the best way to ensure that you don't miss a single episode of this very show. You can connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD and call us. Leave us a voicemail at 503-664-4ADD and get your voice, your thoughts, your very questions on this show. We would love to hear from you. Uh, and I think that's all the news right now. We have more news, and I, it's really struggling not to say it, but it's not quite ready. So consider this a teaser. More things to say later. Got it. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> Uh, before we jump in, uh, the kind listener Lauren has written us with some suggestions uh, about the morning routine, and we we got a bunch of of uh, uh, comments and suggestions over the month that we were off. But this one, given the context of this conversation today, transitions, uh, we thought would be a fun thing to read this morning from listener Lauren. So uh, this is all about morning routines and the steps uh, that that she takes or the thinking that Lauren takes to actually. Um, uh, to actually manage her morning, transition into morning. First, alarm. I change my alarm sound every couple of months so I don't get used to it and start sleeping through it. Or as soon as I do start sleeping through it, I immediately reset it. I can snooze. I assume she's she allows herself to snooze for 30 minutes or browse her phone for those 30 minutes. No news. Uh, I, I love this uh, particular topic. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. that is a very good one. 
It's a great idea to change the alarm too. I, I like that. That's something that we've talked about in the past, just because you do, you get so used to hearing it, it, you just ignore it and it doesn't mean anything. So if it's that new alarm uh, sound, then all of a sudden it like wakes you up and, and you're curious, like, oh, mm -hmm. what is that? So mm -hmm. yeah. It's good. You know, I think it's also easy to get used to the built-in alarm sounds, and there aren't all that many of them. Um, and so, you know, just look for apps in the App Store that give you new alarms, like different kinds of clocks that give you new alarm sounds. There are a bunch of them, uh, I, I believe. And uh, at least I use certain, you know, meditation timers, and you can set them to, to go off at a certain time. And they give you different sounds, sounds that are a little bit more unique. Uh, to wake up to or something that'll allow you to wake up to music in particular is pretty handy. Some of the built-in alarms on certain platforms don't let you do that, but I love that idea. Um, it also says get out of bed immediately to go to the bathroom and take medications with a glass of water. Uh, she leaves the cup and medications on the counter. I have to do this before I pee, she says. I literally <laughs> don't get to morning pee until I take my meds. I have a very consistent wake-up time and weekends I only get to sleep in one hour max alarms for weekends too. Wow, she has some like major discipline here. You Good know, for you, Lauren. Totally. Uh, That's it, awesome. I wish I could say I was like intentionally disciplined about this, but I think as I get older, my sleep schedule has gotten really regimented. Like I don't, I can't wake up later than my alarm has been going off for the last 10 years. You know what I mean? Like I'll wake, even if I don't set it, I'll wake up five minutes before it goes off. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm about the same too. I don't, I don't typically sleep in too much longer on the weekends than I would yeah. uh, during the weekday, but the summer has definitely screwed me up because I do, my work hours do change in the summer. So I, I start later in the morning than I usually do, which means then I stay up later than I usually do. So the summer I, I'm, it's going to be hard in the fall. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have oh, to like I'm retrain myself back. Uh, but this is good. She's great. That's great. And the next one also, uh, uh, mouth thing, <laughs> water meds and go eat easy snack breakfast. I have to eat with my medications. So snack bars, chocolate covered almonds, cheese sticks are always available as an option. Sometimes I have a small yogurt or make hash browns and eggs, but I always, always, always have more than one quick breakfast option to choose from variety and easy. Smart. Smart. Mm -hmm. uh, start the morning playlist. Songs that make me want to move and feel happy and are all four minutes long. All of them randomly play, but when I start the playlist, I check the time and I now know how many songs until I need to leave for work. Then That's I'm not great. surprised by the five minute alarm warning and I get out and the get out the door alarm. Uh, two excellent alarms uh, in, in particular. Well, and there is something about music, too, yeah. that just gets you going, especially when you're listening to something that you really enjoy and that uplifts you. I mean, this is, yeah, it's a great idea. And and the timing here, this is really great. I'm impressed. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, uh, morning checklist. Teeth. Mm, big advocate you know, of that. Huge. Big, big advocate. Tape it on the mirror. Put it everywhere you need to see it. Teeth, hair, deodorant, medicine, outfit, keys, phone, wallet, headphones, jacket mm -hmm. uh, for the morning checklist. And body awareness. This one I really like. Am I sore, tired, unhappy? What do I need to do today to improve on these conditions? Chronic neck pain requiring some active awareness and actions on my part to stay healthy. I love this one. And in fact, you know, I'm a big advocate of day one, uh, the the Mac and iOS journaling app. Uh, and I am uh, I'm a subscriber to the service. I love what the those guys are doing. Uh, and I just created a new journal for that sort of health and fitness awareness. And I make little notes each day uh, on how I'm feeling, how I'm, my weight's going, how my uh, my diet and lifestyle are, are impacting my feelings. And I just, I, I really uh, live by this. I think it's great. This is one of the new things, the new regimens that I've introduced in the last month uh, myself. So hey, uh, hey, very hey. excited to see I have this. a question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm raising my hand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I know you've talked about day one before. This is completely yeah. off. Sorry, Lauren. I'm going to interrupt this message here for a second. <laughs> um, so I decided to start using day one okay. uh, just in this last week. And um, I was unfortunate and fortunate uh, to have some alone time. Oh. Uh, which does not happen in my house very often. Um, and I say it's unfortunate and fortunate because, you know, I miss my family. It's very quiet when they're not around. Uh, but it was also very fortunate for me to have a couple of days where I was just in, you know, it was quiet. <laughs> and yeah, so right. I decided to do some journaling and I, I, did, I opened up day one and I started. But I'm curious when you said that you, you, what's the premium? Like, what's the difference between what you get for free and what you pay for? Like, why would 
I want to pay for it? Well, I've been using day one for a long time. Um, and so I've, I've been just sort of a supporter of the platform and I paid for it the one time on, on the various platforms that you needed to pay for it on. Uh, and so I'm the first thing you get <laughs> from it, uh, is that, you know, it, I, I, for me, I feel good about supporting developers that are, that are doing this thing, you know, for a living. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's really hard to, to make a living when you're doing something that, you know, you pay for software once and, the, the you know for example i bought the thing and then use it for years and i expect them to keep it updated and secure as uh, you know as technology changes but i never pay for it again like as somebody who works hourly whose life is really dependent on people continuing to pay me every month uh i i really uh value that and so mm -hmm. for that that's the first thing that you get you also get um uh you get uh, more um, photos per entry, you get more journals, unlimited journals that you can uh, add. So if you want to sort of separate your, the, the way you're using it, instead of using tags, you can have a journal for your fitness stuff. You can have a journal for movie reviews. You can have a journal for travel or a specific trip you're taking. I set up a journal for China, uh, you know, when I did my China trip in March and I, I really enjoy that because, you know, at the end of it all, they also have this book service, you know, where you can submit your journal and they'll just print a, a hardcover book uh, and send it to you with your entries and your work on it. And I think that's a really wow. cool thing. So, you know, I, it also gives you end to end encryption. So you can encrypt all of the data as it's synced across the, the transom to their servers and to your other devices, which I, I really value, um, you know, as someone concerned about security. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's why I, I like it. Uh, your data ends up being unaffected. If you ever cancel your subscription, you can still always view, edit, uh, you know, you just don't get the, the features that you would have had, um, you know, that you did have when you subscribed to premium. So that's Got it. it. All right. Well, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Now I know. Yes. Now, you know, uh, right. let's see back to Lauren. We have just a couple more points. She puts her lunchbox next to, and on top of her purse, downloads morning playlists, queues up and, and downloads the morning drive and work, uh, playlist includes music, podcasts, audiobooks, comedy, and, uh, sets an alarm for bedtime. Gentle sounds around 30 minutes before the ideal time to get to bed for at least eight and a half hours of sleep. What a great routine. Great, great, great routine. And again, in the spirit of transitions, this, I, I think, you know, we're talking about major sort of big, big, uh, you know, transition, seasonal transitions, career transition, whatever. This is, I, I think these transitions from sleep to wake and wake to sleep are just oh, as important. Yeah. yeah. Really valuable uh, way to start this conversation. So transitions, here we are transitioning back to podcasting after a month off. Uh, where is your head? Well, that's exactly where my head is, is transitioning <laughs> back to podcasting and, uh, and just, you know, people going on vacation and coming back to their normal life and, um, going, you know, soon, very soon, because August is, is now here, you're going to see all the back to school stuff. So people are going from summer to school. Um, maybe you're looking for a new job, a new home. I mean, those are kind of the bigger things, but like you said, Pete, I mean, waking up in the morning, going to bed at night, working on one project during the day and then having to switch to another one. I mean, those are all transitions. So whether they're big or small, um, you know, they can have an effect on you. And the reality is they're just not always easy. In fact, most of the time they're not. Most of the time they're not. Ugh. Yeah. And a couple of things just to, you know, educate people out there about why it's hard for ADHD. I think it's important to understand, you know, how um, ADHD it is affected by this. I, I think that hyperfocus is one of those things that that can definitely, when not used for good, um, can get in the way of transitioning because you may forget to transition. You're so you know so into whatever it is that you're doing. The alarm again doesn't mean anything, or or you didn't set the alarm to begin with, thinking that you would be able to stop doing what you're doing, and time gets away from you, and that can definitely make the transition harder. And also that executive function of getting started. Mm -hmm. um, is definitely going to play uh, a big part here. Um, you know, maybe you're feeling overwhelmed about the next project, and so you're not really sure where to start. So you know what? Well, let's avoid it, right? The avoidance strategies typically do not work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> procrastination. Um, 
all of those things, you know, can, can again, uh, come into play. And then there's a timing issue too. You know, things usually take longer than what we expect. So when we do plan our day and we think, okay, I'm going to get these three things done in the morning and you only, um, completed one of them, um, that, you know, that can be discouraging or, and it, it can make you feel like you're behind now and maybe you got distracted or whatever. So there's a lot of things kind of going on around transitions that I think we have to be aware of. I, uh, oh my goodness, I do too. And here's the thing. I found this little animation. For me, it makes, it, it makes so much sense because this is how I see my ADHD. Yeah. Yeah. That it is a great, it yeah. is this little, I'm going to put it in the show notes for this Good. on the website. So head over to the website because it's, it's a, this animation by a French artist and it's a drop, a little drop comes down and it hits a surface. And then that one drop spawns all sorts of like a thousand fissures in this surface. And it's just this throbbing uh, sort of uh, like dark on white uh, expanding cool. web of, yeah. of transitions. And for me, that's, you know, I know people have all sorts of metaphors for how they describe their ADHD, but for me, that's it. Like I can be focused, 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 and cons- you know, all of my accommodations are in and, and I'm working and I have that one drop of attention and it's doing exactly what I needed to do. And then it hits some block <laughs> and it, it splits <laughs> into a place. million pieces and yeah. that impacts how I speak. It impacts how I think it impacts what I am working on everything. So when you talk about hyper-focus, getting started and timing, taken in isolation for me, hyper-focus can be great. Taken in isolation, sure, I can get started. And even if I can't, eventually I'll come around to it. But all of those together Mm -hmm. are explosive and can really be uh, tragic if I'm not firing on all cylinders. Absolutely. So my question before we... um because I do have some ideas, you know, of how to make this a little bit easier. But I want to know from your perspective, any advice that you have on when that happens, how do you how do you get through it? Uh, I, I have to reduce signal input. I, and I'm, you know, again, I have a lot, you know, a lot of years of accommodations that I've been sort of working on with myself. And so like, you know, it's important for me that my task management, my work, work box, uh, if you go back many years to an episode we did, uh, uh, you know, on the inbox versus the work box, uh, if, if the work box has to be able to be flexible and not show me everything at once. It has to show me exactly what I'm working on, what I need to work on next and nothing else. If I see other stuff, I'll, uh, you know, it'll, it'll kill me. I'll, I'll, again, I'll be fissures in the surface and, Mm -hmm. and gone. Uh, I have to be super, super patient with myself. And that Mm -hmm. is sometimes the biggest fight, um, because it's hard to turn on patience. Um, oh yes, especially when you feel like I haven't gotten started yet, or I have to get started. There is, uh, you know, pain is coming, and I think we've talked about this before. I've been thinking a lot about it. You said one of your, um, one of your clients. Uh, we were talking about this idea of working up to the very deadline or of, of not working until the deadline, just before the deadline and allowing that adrenaline rush to, mm-hmm. to kind of push you over the edge and get stuff done. Uh, I've, I've lived my life like that, mm-hmm. uh, in, in mm-hmm. so many ways. And I have for so long felt like that is unhealthy. I need to change it. And I think there's a lot to that. I don't think it's a very healthy way to, to live. It doesn't feel very good, but I feel just a little bit better when I embrace it, when I change my narrative and change the language I'm using uh, that says, you know, this is who I am, not mm-hmm. this is a bad thing. This mm-hmm. is this is my identity. Like this is I've been doing this long enough that that this is something that maybe I'm not going to be able to actively change. But how can I work and live with it? And how can I actually leverage this behavior to do better work? Um, and and so those are the things that I, I think uh, really impact me around transitions, this idea of patience with myself and with the way I approach you know, the next coming thing, right? Mm-hmm. You know, school is starting. Well, how is my life going to change? You know, it was interesting when you were saying that you kind of go back to, you know, some of the things that work, right? So you're looking, I got to make sure everything else is off and I'm only focusing on this one thing. Like that's a strategy that you know right. works for you. And uh, just recently I had a client who was transitioning, was having a hard time transitioning from being at work to being at home. And the reason, and what I mean by that is that at work, you know, productivity, got to get a bunch of stuff done, um, working my best to try to get this stuff done. And then now I'm at home and I have stuff to do at home, but I'm tired and maybe I'm not as motivated. Right. 
And so um, getting overwhelmed by all of the list of things that there are to do at home and working through what was important, what had to be done now. This is the work that we were doing together, trying to figure out, you know, how what was what was now and what was later is right. how we how we separated the two. Um, but recently he he had reached out and said, I, I'm still really overwhelmed by these distractions. Like I'm still not getting stuff done. And and um, one of the things without me suggesting it, I asked him the question of, well, what do you what do you think you can do to eliminate some of these distractions to get you know back on um, where you want to be? And and he said, oh, well, I need to think about the next three things that I'm going to do. Like, that's what I need to think about. So he kind of, without me telling him, he was able to reach back into his toolbox and say, wait, this is what's worked before. And then I got an email from him last night saying, it worked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was able to come home, think about what I was, you know, on my commute, think about what those next three things were, came home, got those three things done. So I think it's it's also just taking a step back and remembering or trying to remember, like hopefully you have this documented and I've, I'm a big advocate of documenting the strategies that work for you because- mm -hmm. We do forget them. And so when you when you're struggling, it's great to go back and and pull those things out and say, OK, this works now. Well, you know, this goes back to, to journaling, right? Yeah. Uh, to yeah. lifestyle sort of journaling and talk about what works. Tell yourself at the end of every day, you know, write three sentences. Uh, you know, I, I think the other thing I've been talking a lot to a, a friend of the show a, a dear friend of mine, um, a therapist in, in Nashville, Dodge Ray, and we were talking about gratitude and the power of gratitude uh, when making big cha changes in your life. Mm -hmm. And I gave him the idea of something you and I have talked about a lot, which is tiny habits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he reported back to me that he associated a gratitude meditation with every time he went to the bathroom and was washing his hands. Instead of, you know, remember what, what the, the whole idea originally was every time I go, go to the bathroom, I do a push up. Right. That's the right, way to, to right. learn to do push ups. That was a, th a tiny habit to change your life. And instead, Dodger said, every time I go into the bathroom and I'm washing my hands, I take a moment to say to myself about how grateful I am for the life I'm living, for the things that are happening to me, for the space I'm inhabiting, even as frustrated as I am. I put all of that away for just the length of time it takes to wash my hands. And that helps me recenter and navigate the world around me uh, in a much more grounded and appreciative way. And I found, I found that a really moving association for tiny habits. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, I think in terms of making transitions, being grounded and approaching the world in a way that is, um, you know, uh, that is one of grace, um, especially in kind of tumultuous times is, um, you know, so much better. Oh, I agree. I agree. Because then you're, you're shifting your focus from, you know, something that's negative to positive. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I learned a long time ago from my mentor coach that the brain can't do both. And so if you have a choice, which we all do, we all have choices, right. Then focusing on that gratitude can, can make that other icky stuff, you know, not so bad. Exactly. So I like that. Thank you. That's great. That's yeah. great. That's a great strategy. They're I know. number one right there. Put that in the list. What's <laughs> That's next? right. Well, you know, some of the things that I, um, with transitions, especially when you kind of know they're happening, right? We know that summer's going to come to an end in about a month. We know um, that, uh, you know, if you have kids, they're going to be going back to school and there's going to be lists and there's going to be things you're going to need to buy and all of that. And even in that day to day, when you're transitioning from meeting to meeting, I think that one of the, the best habits, one of the um, most effective habits, and I know you you practice this, um, is is planning for it and having adding that little buffer time. So what that means is not over scheduling or overbooking yourself with appointments and not having appointments back to back. And remember, um, at one point, I think it was in the time course that we talk about the Kramer effect. Like, you know, you walk, you walk in like Kramer from Seinfeld. Yeah. Right. 
<laughs> you know, and you're all rushed and you're like, okay, I'm here. Um, and, and that's not a great way to start a meeting or, or, you know, anything. Right. So it's, it's, it's planning ahead and this is not easy. I'm not pretending like it's easy and you may need to get some help, um, from a coworker or a friend or your spouse or your coach, you know, to kind of help you look at how you want to schedule your day. Um, but having that buffer time, I think is really important because it does give you that time to breathe and wash your hands and think about gratitude. <laughs> yes, you know, yes. uh, it gives you that moment to walk outside. And especially, you know, in Oregon, we have such beautiful summers and we just don't get the the hot weather all the time. And so I make it a point every day to walk outside and just breathe in and out and, and listen to nature, you know, cause it's just so such a beautiful time right now. Um, but those types of things will help you at, not only transitioning, but also staying focused on what you mm-hmm. need to, to stay focused on, whatever that might be. Absolutely. This is my tip about the hyper focus, because like you said, it can be a really good thing, right? I mean, hyper focus can be a superpower if you use it correctly, but it can also be a huge downfall. And I think that if you rely only on an alarm to try to get you out of hyperfocus, that that might not be as successful as if you actually have somebody call you or have somebody come into wherever you're at, your home, your office, whatever, and say, hello, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> right. You have asked me to, you know, tell you that it's 10 minutes to noon. And, and so having that person is so much harder to say no to than, than the alarm. And, um, so that's something to think about if you're trying to break that hyper focus is to really have a person, um, rather than just the alarm. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. I I think when I'm, you know, when I'm really struggling, it's uh, largely when I don't have somebody else to kind of mirror their work pattern. And I, you know, I'm, I work out of my house, my home office, but so does my wife. And when I'm most productive, it's when she's here and working and focused. And I find myself just doing what she's doing. Oh, you know? right. Yeah. And she's your body. double. Yeah. She's my body double. And I just, I don't even tell her that that's my behavior, but I am much more productive when she's there. And when it's so, you know, when you say, ask someone to be your alarm, sometimes you don't even need to ask yeah. just, just, you know, be in that space. And when they change context, so can you, uh, right. and that's that, that works for me too. But, but definitely, I mean, I, I think a human alarm, somebody that you're forced to engage with, uh, somebody that you're, you're forced to, you know, to, you're, you're going to be forced to be in a position of either lying to them and telling them, Oh yeah, I'll stop in a minute or, Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally paying attention. Right. <laughs> or, right. or you have to come clean. That's, that's a, uh, that's a, a place that you can find yourself getting ahead. Uh, when you, when you put that, that little bit of, of extra social pressure. So this is kind of a random story, but it, it, came to mind when you were talking about that. I had somebody tell me that they had um, some people come in to do a remodel. And um, I think they were remodeling their kitchen, if I'm correct. And every time they came into work, that's when she would work. Like she had a bunch of pay. She went through the paper solution, my online course. Sure. So she was going through the steps of that. And so when they were coming into work, she would actually be working on the paper solution. And she realized it's like, well, they're my body double. Because they don't know. <laughs> they don't even the, know it. They don't know it. But while they're working, I'm working. And then when they leave, I'm done. Oh. <laughs> That's so good. So, yeah, creative. I mean, yeah. you know, that it, it's a good way of looking at it. Um, we've, got a couple quick, of, we've got a couple of bigger transitions, right? Because this is summer and we've got vacations yeah, and kids yeah. going to school. How do you How do you handle that? Yeah, I think that the vacation, and I learned this early on um, for myself, and I, th- I think it's it's important for everybody. It, when you go on vacation, I know we tend to want to, you know, use every single day to the fullest, uh, but I definitely think it helps to have a transition day. So if you um, are on vacation for a week and say you leave on Saturday, uh, I highly suggest that you come back on Saturday, not Sunday, and start your work day on Monday. I think having that Sunday of where you're just home, you have a whole day to unpack, you can do your laundry, you can go to the grocery store, you can get whatever you need for your pets. Like you can kind of regroup yourself and giving you that day to, to do those things. It's really hard if you come home on Sunday night and you have to go to work the next morning to transition. I mean, you're just, Uh, it's really difficult. You know what I would say, I would say 
that if you are somebody who is a return Sunday, work Monday person, and you just try it, just try returning Saturday with a break day, you will never go back. I agree. I agree. It's so rewarding to have just the extra time to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. And it's transition time. Yeah. I mean, it is time to, you know, go from vacation mode to, okay, back to, to, to normal life. And yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that's, that's the thing I would really, um, encourage you for, for vacation, which a lot of people are taking vacation now. And I think if you have kids going back to school, um, and Pete, you can chime in. I think, I mean, this is tough because I have waited to the last minute to buy school supplies and I really <laughs> screwed ourselves because <laughs> everything was gone <laughs> and we had to go to the expensive office store to yeah. buy pencils that were like, I swear, $20. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so I can't say that I'm like a hundred percent on this because I do tend to procrastinate when it comes to the kids going back to school. I am that mom um, that really like I I hate this time because I really like having my kids home um, and I really love summer. Um, and so it is hard. It's hard. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm probably not the one to talk about this. So Pete, <laughs> Please share your expertise on us going back to school. Oh not my us, gosh! But our kids. No, I am. I am probably not either because I also hate this time. But uh, I am a uh, an avid Amazon back to school shopper. I'm. <gasps> I'm sorry. That's a great idea. Yeah, I. I just, never thought about that. Oh, it's huge. And you know what else is great? Uh, that you know, it's. It, they have this thing where you can you sign in at back to school season. It all this little pop up will come up and and it'll read where you are, and it'll say, "Hey, do you want to support this particular school for every purchase? You know, we'll drop back a few pennies toward uh, the school that you're buying for, right? right?" And we've always done that with our our you know elementary school and middle school and and now high school, and it just sort of feels good. And I can't go out to Office Depot again. I can't. Uh, during back to school time, I just, I, I am too, honestly, it's not because of anything I feel about ba Office Depot. It's one of my very favorite stores in the world, <laughs> but at back to school time, it's like, um, me and the Oompa Loompas leading me <laughs> down the, the candy path of all the wonderful toys and candies for me to look at. And that's right. just because I have a weird obsession with office supplies. I can't, <laughs> it's too overwhelming for my brain. I can't do it. And so, um, no, I sit down with my, with my kids and we'll get on Amazon and we'll look at the, the list of things that we have to buy and we'll go ahead and, and make the purchase. And honestly, my kids are even better than I am at this point about reusing stuff from the last year. So at yes, the end of summer, right. you know, they go through, they go through their material and make sure that their notebooks that are still working, binders and things, they they clean them up. And so we have less to buy each year. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I Amazon, Amazon All for right, the win. That's what I'm doing. And that's like, I never even thought of yeah. that. Isn't well, that crazy? and that's what's so cool is that they can sit down with me and, yeah, and pick it out, pick it out. And everything is there. The specific, specific model numbers, you know, everything they need is there and it comes with within a couple of days. Wow. You just changed my life. <laughs> Because I still, I, I have this memory of this, you know, just looking at the school supplies and yes, it's so particular about what they need. And then me looking at the aisles and I can't find it. Yeah, <laughs> it's totally. It's so annoying. Or something is out. So you have to go to like three different stores. Yeah. Not it's anymore, crazy. Nikki Kinzer. Not, not anymore. Not anymore. Thank you, Pete, right? I, you know, sometimes I, I've had this pushback. I've told, I told somebody, you know, I'm, I'm shopping on Amazon for school supplies and like, oh, you don't support the local economy. Come on. When's the last time you shopped local for office supplies? Like Office Depot is where you go. It's uh, probably where the Amazon products are coming from anyway. I don't even know a local uh, office supply back to school shop anymore. Like, uh, so yeah. I have no qualms about Amazon supporting my back to school habit. Oh, that's great. And it goes back to the school, too, yep. so that's awesome. Huge. Okay, so I know that there's lots of ideas um, about transitions, and we would love to hear from you guys, from our audience, our listeners. So if you have anything to contribute to this conversation, please do. Please let us know and share, and we will put it onto the show. Uh, quick review. Um, I One of the things that uh, was asked, and I think this is a great idea, is at the end of the show to just do a little quick review 
of what we talked about. And, and we I talked about this. a lot today. Oh, I know. And I wasn't even, oh, this is going to be hard, Nikki Kinzer. Well, it's not to recap everything. It's just to <laughs> sort of like review that this is what yes. we talked about, right? Because otherwise we'd be on here for another 20 minutes. And That's so, right. Yeah. No, you know, we started with the morning routine, right? From Lauren. We did. And then I really interrupted. <laughs> yes. And I shared the beauty of the day one app and the link to day one the- is in the show notes. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, then we talked uh, about your tips on transitions and your gratitude, right? We the talked gratitude, about gratitude. Tiny habit from Dodge tiny Ray. Habit. Yes, yes, absolutely. Love that. And, uh, and then we talked about giving uh, your space for transitions around vacation, planning, having that buffer time. Um, expecting them and planning them will definitely make them better. And Amazon, I think, is the biggest win today. <laughs> Amazon for the win. You know what? I think I'm going to see if I can dig up a link for the Amazon like gives back program. I don't even remember what it's called, but I will find a link. We'll put that in the show notes as well. As well. And and one more public service announcement. Because we get these emails from time to time of people saying, where are the show notes? Uh, and so here's the deal with the show notes. The show notes are on the website at the episode number. So if you can just go to take control or uh, you can just go to take control ADHD. You almost said organizing. I did, but I was trying to be <laughs> subtle about it. It's been a long time. How did that come up? Uh, Habit. You, so you can go to take control ADHD.com slash podcast slash episode number like this is episode 305 so slash 305 and you'll go to the the page for this episode and all the show notes are there in your podcast app uh, if you go to the place where there's writing about the episode there's a show notes page on all the major podcast apps so you can just usually swipe over and read the show notes and all the links are there too so the the notes are always bundled with wherever you're listening to the show. Uh, and so if they're not bundled, it means somebody is scraping our episodes and you should find a better place to listen to the show. Uh, <laughs> and then you'll get the show notes. But the website and in, in the major podcast in iTunes, they're, they're there. Um, so that's, that's the well, deal on and that's show another notes. reason too, to sign up for the, the weekly update, right? Because, yep. um, every week I send out a newsletter to highlight what our show is about that week. And I also give a lot of extra insight and extra material and content in those newsletters. And so, um, you know, I may, I, I I'm thinking out loud and processing this, but it may not be a bad idea to have some of those show notes into that newsletter too. So it's there as well. well so. Yeah. And you know, we do put the, 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 um, you know, we can we, we do have the major sort of paragraph write up on what it is, but generally don't include the links uh, right, that we right. put in that newsletter. So that that's something that if we're interested in doing, if people think that would be useful, we could put those in there too. Let us know. That's what. That's all I got. That's all I got. Excellent. Thank hey, you. Thank you. This was great. Yes. Welcome back. I'm so excited welcome to be back on back. schedule. This is so good. And uh, thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to this episode. We, Nikki Kinzer and me, Pete Wright, we sure appreciate your time and attention. We'll talk to you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Podcast.